when it comes to pickleball, we understand how important fitness really is when it comes to performance nowadays. This game is getting so competitive at the amateur level as well as the professional level. We have to put our fitness, at, we have to make it a priority. So when it comes to that, there are some functional movement patterns that I believe that all players should be able to master. You need to be proficient in these movement patterns. These strength patterns, these movement patterns are gonna be a squat, a hinge, a push, a pull, and a lunge. So going over the first one, a squat. And within all these, I don't think you need to be extremely strong in all these or be uh, the best at them all. But I think you need to be proficient in them and you need to be able to, to carry your own body weight and, and some. So a squat. If I'm gonna do a body weight squat or a goblet squat, I'm gonna use this small kettlebell here. And I'm gonna be able to perform a squat and I'm gonna be able to do it well, right? I'm gonna be able to keep my torso up. I'm gonna be able to get down to at least parallel and come back up. My knees, they're staying over my toes. I'm being able to sit in my glutes, right? I'm, I'm proficient in this movement. That's my goal. I wanna be proficient at it. So goblet squats, it's a foundational movement. If you can get good at goblet squats and you know, be able to squat 50, 60, 100 pounds, that's awesome. You know, if, if you're starting with your body weight and you work up to 20, that's great too. But it's a good movement pattern that I believe all pickleball players, all athletes should get strong in. Our next one will be a hinge. So a hinging movement, is just a little bit different from a squat. It's more hip dominant, where a squat is a little bit of both, right? A little bit of hips and knees, but you definitely get a little bit more knee bend. When a hinge, a hinge is coming from your hips. So I'm gonna do like an RDL with a kettlebell, Romanian deadlift, and I'm just gonna hinge at my hips, right? I have a soft knee bend, and then I'm gonna push my hips back so I get it right about below the knees, and then I'm gonna come back up. You see, it's driven from the hips, kind of like at the kitchen. Right, when we're at the kitchen, we're playing, we're, we're kind of driven from our hips. We're kind of sitting in our glutes a good amount. That's what hinging is about, sitting in those hips, sitting in those glutes. It's a movement pattern that we should be able to get good at, right? We wanna be able to get into our hips while not bending the knees. Kind of takes, it takes practice, right? Because a lot of times we want to bend our knees when we do those kind of RDLs. So a squat and a hinge, we wanna get strong in those. Those are kind of like some lower body, uh, foundational movement patterns. And then talking about the upper body, we wanna be good at pressing, right? So squat, hinge, push. So push, kind of like a push up, an overhead press, um, dumbbell bench press, these things we wanna get good at. What I think everybody should be good at is a push up, whether it's a modified push up from your knees, a normal push up, right? And on your feet in a high plank position, or if we're doing an elevated push up, like if you're gonna do a push up off of a bench, you should be able to be proficient in this. So demonstrating a push-up, we just wanna be in a good position. I wanna be able to keep my core engaged. I wanna be able to keep my glutes somewhat squeezed, right? I'm not kind of poking my butt up and I'm not really like letting it sag either. I'm in a straight posture, my glutes are squeezed. I'm gonna slowly lower myself down and be able to push myself up, right? My elbows kind of go into a 45 degree angle. They're not super close and tucked. They're not bowed out like this. Stay in that 45 degree angle, and then I'll be able to press myself back up. If that's too difficult, let's try it from the knees, right? Same thing, I don't wanna push my butt up, keep my glutes kind of squeezed, slowly lower, and come back up. We should all be able to do a push up. If you can't, let's work to it. Do some kind of regression, like modified or elevated, but be able to do a push up. This is a proper movement pattern that we should all be good at. Next, Still in the upper body is a row, right? A pulse. So squat, hinge, push, and then pull. So being able to do rows, bent over dumbbell or kettlebell rows, right? Being able to keep my torso in a good position as I bend over and pull this dumbbell towards my hip. I'm not pulling it towards my chest or my ribs, and I'm not like flaring or like rounding, and I'm not overextended. I'm in a good posture. I'm pulling towards my hip and coming back down. Um, whether it's a pull-up, pull-ups are super hard. If you're good at pull-ups, congrats. They're, I mean, it's, it's a tough one, but I think that's something we should work towards. So squat, hinge, push like push-ups, pulls working on our back, and then a lunge going back to the lower body. So lunging variations, whether that's split squats, reverse lunges, lateral lunges, right? Really getting specific in that lateral plane, in that frontal plane, like we're working in the kitchen being able to proficiently do those. 
So a split squat, looking at this, I'm just splitting my stance just so that I can drop my back knee straight down, right? I want to be able to do this with body weight or some light weight at least and be proficient in it. So dropping my knee straight down and I'll come back up. I can do it in a goblet position. Goblet, kettlebell, drop the knee straight down and come back up, extending my front knee at the top. Once again, this isn't something we have to do with a barbell on our back, with 200 pounds on our back, we just need to be proficient in it. So squat, hinge, push, pull, and lunge. Five movement patterns that I think we need to be work towards to get strong in and be proficient in to set the foundation, right? If we're thinking about getting strong and increasing your fitness, this is kind of the foundation. If we see, if we see it as a pyramid, right? We're trying to lay the foundation. This is the bottom layer of the pyramid. This is what we're trying to do. That's our foundational movements. That's what we need to build and get strong at in the beginning. Once we get strong at those in the beginning, then we can get more advanced and go into the more advanced agility work and conditioning and things of that nature. But this, these five movement patterns, we need to be proficient in first.